This thing's too dirty for me to clean around the house here. I'm going to take it to the wishy-washy and uh, spray it off and leave the uh, oil and metal stains, metal shavings there. It's too big and heavy to handle around here with my little sink. Off to the car wash. on my uh, lathe bed I actually did four rounds of stripping it's still got a little cast of uh, gray to it almost gives me doubts and makes me think it's just the, 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 the what uh, cast iron looks like but I think it's really a little bit of paint that's down in the in the grain I'm using the hammer to cut this. There's a little bit of ragged edges and stuff here. And, you know, you can see how it's how it's flowing there. This will give me probably a little truer job than a uh, than a knife would. I don't know. I've gone back and forth. I've used the knife. I've used the rubber hammer. plastic side cuts better. It's the same technique you use to make a gasket. You ain't never been poor if you ain't ever had to make a gasket like this before for a thermostat housing or something like that. A lot of raggedy stuff to get into there. A lot of these areas down here didn't look like they paid a whole lot of attention to the to the sand casting. I have got a ton of time in cleaning all of these parts. I just can't even believe how much time it's taken. I wish I'd recorded it. But believe me, the biggest part of this job isn't taking it apart, it isn't putting it back together. It's cleaning everything and getting it ready to uh, accept primer and paint. I suggest if you do one of these, and I definitely recommend you do, that you pick a time when you can uh, you can work at it, you know, maybe a, over the winter or something. And you can peck at it a little bit every day. Because I'm afraid if you had to do it all at once, you'd probably quit. Boy, 
I may have to break out the knife on this. Now here we go. I think I finally got it perforated enough. I don't want any paint on these bottom surfaces because, well, presumably, they're ground in parallel with the top surface. So if I were to mount it on a level workbench, I would... I'm going to have to get a knife. Keep coming back to this knife. If I were to mount it on a level workbench, and I had the Rocky Mountains here in different paint heights underneath the, the, the bed feet, um, you know, I would be holding the, la the lathe in a bind. And I don't know if I'll ever have a table that fine or not, but um, I might as well do it right if I'm going to do it. Anything worth doing is worth doing correctly. And if you can't do it right, do it the best way you know how. So, I haven't, at the time that I'm filming this, I haven't started posting any of the videos. For this project even though I'm well well into it I don't know how some of these channels do it I guess if you're a full-time youtuber you know you can edit your video at the end of every day I just kind of uh, do what I want when I want to and then for whatever reason I don't feel like working out here or getting dirty or it's too cold or whatever then I'll uh, I'll edit a couple of videos and put them online would like to get all that stuff up to date I hope some people are excited about this Atlas Lathe project I've got some great ideas for, for lathe projects when I get this done I'm going to do a series of videos called Lathe Heal Thyself. So once I get the lathe far enough along, it may still have some imperfections, some parts that need to be remade or machined or trued up. But we'll, we'll use the lathe to do that once we get it so far along. Like I noticed, I've got some... Uh, I might not have a really good tailstock. A little bit of play in that. So I think I can board out slightly and turn a new, um, a new shaft for the tailstock. And I have a few, a few different things like that. And I want to make some gears. I'm excited about... I've never made a gear before. I'm excited about making gears. And this lathe has a couple of gears that are worn and can stand to be replaced. And I shop shopping on eBay for various things, used parts and stuff. It's so tempting to buy some <laughs> that I know I'm going to need. But I don't want to do that because I think they'll make just fantastic video projects. And you know, the purpose of having a lathe is to make tools to be able to repair things. So I don't want to lose sight of what the purpose of the lathe is. If I buy everything that I could make with the lathe, well, restoring the lathe didn't really make much sense, did it? would be like, why did you do that? So I'm going to stick at it wait till it's done. I'm so excited to put the first piece of material in it and make a cut. And there'll be a lot, there'll be a lot to that too. I tore the lathe all apart so it'll need a lot of setup work. I'll do my best to get it all right. I want a nice straight machine. I bet you if I had a, uh, I wonder if I had a inline skate wheel roll along the edge of this tape real firmly I wouldn't get the same effect or similar effect
we may never know because I don't own one of those. I'm looking for a uh, antique bench top drill press to restore. Probably should have took a picture of this one I went to look at. The guy up north of St. Paris, Ohio had this drill press, antique drill press, advertised for uh, 40 bucks. And I called him and he didn't really know what it was or what model it was. There was a number on it. And I googled the number and it came up a goose egg. So I thought, eh. I was pretty close. I was only about 14 miles away because it was up in Troy anyways. So I went to look at this thing and it was really pretty cool. It was a homemade drill press. Someone used a benched arbor to make it and uh, it was really pretty cool. Um, but it, do it doesn't really fit with uh, the projects that I want to do. I'd like to get an old atlas or maybe an old craftsman or or maybe an actual machine shop quality drill press to restore. A camelback would be the real fantasy to get. Um, so it didn't really fit with that and I'm, I'm kind of out of room right now anyways. So what you know why bring something else into my workshop that it may be cool but it isn't really what I'm looking for. I've got enough machines here that I'm a few ahead for projects. So I thought discretion was the better the better half of valor and I left it there. Would love to have shown it to you though. It was pretty crazy. Would have been fun to go over all the pieces of it and figure out where they came from. Shouldn't be touching the oil can with something that I'm about ready to paint. Man, this was the toughest thing to clean ever. So heavy. This is the surface where the uh, where the rack gear is that you move the carriage back and forth. So I'm gonna, that's a machine surface, so that's not going to be painted, so I've got a mask of that off. A um, few areas on this that need masked off. Of course, I won't be painting the ways. I'll be leaving those alone, but all of this rough cast area that's not machined, I'll be painting. And maybe you can see that surface. I think I still have some gray paint down in the grain there, but... I've done uh, stripped it three times. I think that's as good as it gets. I've been using that uh, orange stripper, citrus strip, citrus strip, which I think works pretty good. Um, I don't know. Maybe the oven cleaner would have gotten that. Maybe not. I don't know. I know when I get done with this project, I don't want to be stripping paint for any huge projects for a while. All right. More later. I wonder why I'm using gray. I ran out of red. I'm going to avoid getting any of this on the camera.